Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the cell cycle. How does the cell divide? What is the process that's involved um, when a cell is dividing? So we're going to first start with some terms. The first one is called diploid, the second one is called haploid. So whenever you see di something, that means two of something. Um, and the haploid is the, the opposite of that, where you have one set of something. So um, in the last video, we talked about what a chromosome is. So if you can remember, whenever you draw this rod shape, that will be a chromosome. And what a chromosome is, is that it's a supercoiled DNA. It's not just any DNA, it's supercoiled DNA. So if you were to have, for example, in this picture right here, three different chromosomes, and they're all, they're all different, right? As, as you can see, the color is different, the sizes are different, the, uh, the, you know, overall they're all different, right? So now we have, if a cell has three chromosomes that are all different from each other, there's no similarities whatsoever, then this is called a haploid cell, and you can represent it with a letter N. Um, a diploid cell would have pairs of chromosomes. As, as you can see in this picture right here, if a cell has, let's say, six chromosomes in total, but really the six chromosomes is three pairs of chromosome, and each pair of chromosome have many similarities to each other. They code for the same thing. Then you will call this cell a diploid cell, okay? Um, so for example, let's say, well, what do we mean by a pair of chromosomes that code for the same traits, same thing? Um, so let's say this, these two chromosomes, this right here, this part of the DNA codes for eye color, then this part of the DNA would also code for eye color. If this part of the DNA codes for hair color, this part of the DNA would also code for hair color. If this part of the, uh, the DNA codes for, or this chromosome codes for, um, what else, the size of your nose, then this part of the DNA also codes for the size of your nose. All right? So... We have pairs of chromosomes that code for the same thing. It doesn't mean that this eye color has to be brown. This one also has to be brown, but they both have to be eye colors. But each, each one of the chromosome will have certain traits that it codes for and um, the location of where, where what's being coded for are the same on a pair of chromosome. Okay? So let's start with diploid, two of each type of chromosome, one set from each parent if the organism went through sexual reproduction. So what does that mean, okay? So let's say this picture right here shows you a normal human cell. This is actually a boy, but we'll talk about that some other time. But this right here, as you can see, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. For each pair, the staining pattern of the color, the staining, are all the same, meaning that uh, if this right here codes for hair color, this codes for hair color as well. So there, there are 23 pairs of chromosome, okay? So in your body, every single cell except for the sperms or egg cells, every other cell will, be, will have um, 23 pairs of chromosomes. So, so here's how this works, okay? We have these cells in your body that are not sperms or eggs are called somatic cells. Somatic cells... Um, Okay, somatic cells are always 2N, or you can call it diploid. And uh, in human, the 2N number, the 2N equals to 46, which means in every one of your somatic cells, there should be 46 chromosomes. So that means your red blood cell should have 46 chromosomes, your hair cell should have 46 chromosomes, your lung cell should have 46 chromosomes, everything, everything is diploid and have 46 chromosomes in a human, okay? Um, somatic cells are produced through the process called mitosis, and we'll talk more about mitosis um, in a little bit. And then, um, and then we have something called gametes, or those are also called sperms and eggs. So the gametes are the reproduction cells. So that's a bigger word. That's a big category, gametes. And then the subcategory would be sperms, sperms and eggs. Gametes all have half of the amount of chromosomes compared to the somatic cells. So instead of 2N right here, we're going to have N, and we can call that haploid. So if you look on the computer, instead of having one pair of each numbered chromosome, right, number chromosome set of number one has two chromosomes, two has two chromosomes, three has two chromosomes. Instead of having two of each, we're only going to have one of each. That's what makes a haploid cell, right? So instead of having two of each, we'll only have one of each. That's a haploid cell. So in a human body, the N number or the haploid number will be 23 because there are 23 distinctive 
distinct types of chromosomes, okay? So let's look at our notes again. Haploid means you have one set of chromosome, and if, if we're doing sexual reproduction, you'll get one set uh, from one set from ma, mom, one set from dad. So this is how this works. Let's um, demonstrate this real quick with this green paper. All right. So let's say this is this is dad right here. This dad's normal somatic cells. There are 46 chromosomes, right? During sexual reproduction, we have we got to make sperm cells. Then we go through meiosis. So how it works is that you'll get half of the amount of chromosomes. So now we have N or haploid or 23 distinct chromosomes. There's no pairs, it's just 23, okay? This is sperm right here. And then we take mom, 46 chromosomes, diploid, and then we're going to split this into two halves. So now we have an egg cell that only has 23 chromosomes, right? We're half of the amount of genetic information from mom. Remember when we talk about sexual reproduction, the child, the offspring gets half of the genes from mom, half the genes from dad. This is how this works. Now we got half the genes from mom, 23 chromosomes, half the genes from dad, 23 chromosomes. We put them together. Now we have 46 chromosomes again. Now we have a full baby. This one fertilized egg is going to turn into a baby, hopefully. That's how this works. If you have questions, I'm going to be here in the morning. Please come, please come ask me, okay? All right, now here's a new word called homologous chromosomes. What are homologous chromosomes? They have the same genes at the same locations. So well, earlier when we said one pair of chromosomes, right? This is one pair of chromosomes. This is one pair of chromosomes. A more scientific way of saying one pair of chromosome is saying homologous chromosome, right? Because you can say this and this. If you put those two together, you can still call it one pair of chromosomes, but they're not homologous chromosomes because they don't actually, you know, they're not actually coding for the same thing. So these two will be homologous chromosomes. These two will be homologous chromosomes. These two will be homologous chromosomes. So there are two ways you can draw your homologous chromosomes. All right, if we have unduplicated chromosomes, you can draw it like this. That's your one pair of homologous chromosomes. If we have duplicated chromosomes, all right, we still need two chromosomes. So that's one chromosome, one duplicated chromosome. This is another duplicated chromosomes, uh, chromosome. Together, these are homologous. All right? And now, review. Sister chromatids on the left side. That's one chromatid. That's another chromatid. The left and the right, those two are sister chromatids. On the left, this is another chromatid. This is another chromatid, sister chromatid. So in total, right here, we have two DNA. Now we have four DNA. Two DNA and four chromatids, because one, two, three, four. Four sister chromatids, right? Or four chromatids, you would say it. Two chromosomes, two chromosomes. So make sure that you know how to count these, these numbers. All right, now we can move on. Um, to the next page, uh, this is showing you again, if the mother has a haploid cell with or an egg cell or a gamete that has one N, um, and the one N number in this case is one N equals to two, because as you can see, there are two chromosomes, two unduplicated chromosomes. Dad, we have, here we have sperm, here we have uh, a gamete, um, here we have a haploid cell. This is also has two chromosomes, right? Together, now we have four chromosomes in total, and right here we didn't have any homologous pairs, but right here, now we have homologous pairs, right? Even though the colors are different, this is showing you that this came from dad, this came from mom, but these two are a pair of chromosomes. They code for the same things. These two code for the same things, okay? If we count chromosome numbers, two chromosomes, two chromosomes, four chromosomes, two DNA, two DNA, four DNA, everything is unduplicated. One N, one N, two N. Fertilization, all right? Moving on, cell division. Um, there are two types of cell division. There's mitosis and meiosis. Um, I would suggest you to remember these memes and uh, this picture right here. So starting with mitosis. Mitosis goes from 2N, well, as the parent cell is 2N, and we're forming two daughter cells right here that are also 2Ns. And the two daughter cells are the exact same as each other and as the parent. So as you can see right here, a little mitosis, we have our parent cell, two daughter cells, everything is 2N, everything is diploid in a human, everything is 46, 
Um, that's all I can say. Uh, they're all somatic cells. So here we have um, the parent cell. Here we have two daughter cells that are identical. Meiosis, so this is a process of producing somatic cells, uh, like we said. Gametes are produced by something called meiosis. So let's put a line in the middle. The gametes are produced by meiosis because, remember, gametes have half of the, um, the amount of chromosomes as the original. So how does that work? We have meiosis starting with one parent cell, but we end up with four daughter cells. And the four daughter cells are different from each other, and they're different from the parent. If we're talking about the n numbers or the fluidity of, um, of the cell, the parent cell will be 2n, but the daughter cells are 1n's, right? And that, that's the whole point. Earlier we had, we had 2n, and we're getting 1n on purpose so that the sperm and egg can fuse together and go back to the normal amount of 2n again so that the child can have half the chromosomes from dad, half the chromosomes from mom. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, these words. Mitosis um, is, works for organisms that go through asexual reproduction. So if we have a unicellular organism that goes through asexual reproduction, it could go through mitosis. Um, it go, it's used for growth and repair of your body cells. So your somatic cells, when, when a person is growing or when we're repairing the body um, because there's some sort of broken anything, then we go through mitosis, right? Mitosis works for anything, everything except the gametes. The result is that you get two daughter cells that are identical to the parents, and there are two it. Meiosis is only for sexual reproduction, right? Because we're producing gametes, and gametes are for sexual reproduction. So we're, we have four gametes produced um, that are unidentical to the parents. So now, moving on to the cell cycle. The cell cycle, um, right here we're talking about mitosis. So the cell cycle kind of is the anticipation of mitosis and mitosis itself. So we start with the G1 phase and then we move on to the S phase, G2 phase, and the M phase. In total, this is one whole cell cycle. G1, S, G2, M. Say so three more times. G1, S, G2, M. G1, S, G2, M. I'm tired. Anyway, so you should know that there's something called the interface, and the interface is the preparation step before mitosis. So the mitotic phase is where mitosis is actually happening, when the cell is actually being, one cell is being split into two cells that are identical to the parent. So that's the, the actual mitosis part, but there's some anticipation that needs to be done, right? It's, it's like we're going to a prep hockey game, and, and there are anticipations that need to happen before the hockey game. Um, so what are the anticipations? During G1 phase, your cell needs to grow bigger. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, actually. So the cell cycle goes through sequence of growth and development prior to the, the, the division. The interphase is the anticipation phase where your cell is getting ready for cell division but not actually dividing. Uh, there, then there's mitosis and cytokinesis. So mitosis, we'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, the frequency of cell division, that's... Sorry, that's my mom. Um, the frequency of cell division varies with the cell type. So depending on what type of cell you have, um, red blood cell, for example, divides pretty frequently, but then your neurons rarely divide at all. So here comes this other thing called the G0 phase. We have G1S, G2M. So what's G0? Zero means there's nothing happening, right? So but it's not saying that this cell is dead and actually nothing is happening. Your cell is still doing the job except now your cell is not dividing, and it's not preparing to divide. So as we can see right here, G0, resting phase, cells not dividing nor preparing to divide. So if you remember, G1, S, G2 interface, we're preparing to divide, right? G0, not doing that. Mitotic phase, when your cell actually divides, G0, not doing that. So G0 comes off of the G1 phase. So what's the point of G0? First off, um, before we go into DNA replication, we have to make sure that your cell is ready to divide. Your cell needs to divide. Your cell is big enough. There's no damage in the DNA. That's when we can actually enter the S phase. So G0 is entered if your cell is not ready to divide yet. If there's some DNA damage that needs to be fixed, your cell didn't receive a signal to divide, then it's going to go into the G0 phase. It will come off right here and go into this dormant phase. But again, your cell is not really dormant, it's just 
not dividing, we're preparing to divide. Or um, for a lot of our cell types, or some of our cell types, they're in G0 phase all the time. So for example, um, your neurons, a lot, of, a lot of the neurons that you have, uh, kind of they don't turn into more neurons. The ones they're there, they're there, right? So they stay in the G0 phase because they don't need to divide. So before we move on to the actual, um, um, each part of the cell cycle, let's talk about cell cycle regulation real quick. Just like everything in life, there needs to be control on uh, when should something happen. So same thing with the cell cycle. The cell cycle is not supposed to go through the G1S, G2M unless it needs to, right? Unless your cell actually needs to divide. So for example, if you get a cut on your hand, your skin cells are going to go through the cell cycle a lot, right? It's, it's going to receive some signal to say, all right, all right, guys, we, we got we to gotta fix this problem. We got to fix this cut right here. PD divide, right? everybody divide, okay? However, if your skin is fine, then it's not going to divide as often, and not as many of the cells are going to go through cell division. So uh, here's something important called the regulatory proteins. The regulatory proteins regulate the cell cycle. It tells the cell cycle, is it time to keep going through the G1S, G2M, and allow the cell to divide or not? An example of the regulatory protein is called cyclin. So, anyway, cyclin, cell cycle, it kind of makes sense. So within your cell cycle, there are also these checkpoints to make sure that everything is ready before we go on to the next step. Are we, are we ready? Are we ready to go? So the cell cycle check, checkpoints, make sure that your cell cycle can be you know, gone through successfully. Um, and there are three checkpoints, and we'll look at a picture of that in a second. Oh, actually, let's look at this. So here's our cell cycle checkpoint. We have first the G1 checkpoint that checks for nutrient growth factors, which is also um, the regulatory proteins, and DNA damage. If there's not enough nutrients, if there's no regulatory protein telling your cell that it's actually supposed to divide, or if there's DNA damage, then we're going to go into the G0 phase, the resting phase. If everything is good, okay, we can continue on to the next step. Then we're going to go into the synthesis phase, DNA synthesis. So what happens during DNA synthesis? This happens. Your unduplicated chromosomes or your un unduplicated DNA is going to turn into duplicated DNA, right? So if we start in G1 with 20 chromosomes, by the time we go through, we, we are done with the S phase, we're still going to have 20 chromosomes, but now we're going to have 20 duplicated chromosomes, which means we're going to have 40 DNA instead, right? So let's look at this one more time. If we were to start with two DNA, two chromosomes, after we go through DNA synthesis, or the synthesis phase, or the DNA replication phase, we're still going to have two chromosomes. The chromosome numbers don't change. However, right now we're going to have four chromatids, and we're going to have four DNA instead of two DNA now, because everything is replicated. How exactly does that work? We'll talk about it uh, in AP Bio. Um, G2. So once our DNA is completely ready, everything is duplicated, one DNA becomes two DNA attached like that, an X shape. Now we can go on to the G2 phase where we prepare for the cell division even more. So by the time we get to the G2 checkpoint, everything has to be ready. There has to be no DNA damage. The cell size is big enough. Your DNA is replicated just fine, right? So let's say if one of your DNA didn't actually replicate, that's not good. We can't divide without DNA being, without DNA not being replicated. So you got to make sure everything's good. And then we have the M phase checkpoint where the spindle fibers are attached to the sister chromatids correctly. So, so hold that in the back of your mind when we talk about mitosis. We'll talk about that again. Now, um, well, we're getting there. Now we have apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. Uh, what is that? Sometimes your cells want to live most of the time, but then other times your cell needs to die in order to allow the organism uh, to be the way it is. So for example, when a butterfly, well, when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, there's a lot of apoptosis going on. A lot of the cells are going to destroy and re get remade. Um, the most relevant one for us is um, the formation of digits. So when you have ha hands, at when, when you're in an embryo, right, before the person or a mouse or a lot of organisms with digits, before they're born, the hand is fused together because that's how the development process works. 
So in order to actually have individual fingers that are separated from each other, apoptosis has to happen in between the fingers correctly. If apoptosis does not happen, if the cells that are programmed to die do not die, um, people can be born with fused fingers, which is not that big of a deal. All it takes is a surgery to get, to get it fixed. Um, however, I hope this helps you appreciate the importance of apoptosis. When you turn a tadpole into a, a, a frog, apoptosis is what gets rid of the tails. It doesn't hurt, um, but it helps, it helps the natural process to happen. Okay? So that's one way for apoptosis to happen. Another reason for apoptosis to happen is when a cell is damaged. So when a cell is already damaged, it's not doing your body any good. It's just going to you know, cause troubles. Apoptosis is supposed to happen to destroy that cell before it, cause, um, it causes any problems. So now let's look at some details of each one of the phases. The first one is called G1 phase. All right, again, we start with G1. We're prepared for cell division. We go to S, DNA synthesis, G2, fully prepared, M, when your cell actually divides. So now we're on to G1. G1 phase, G stands for gap. What happens during this phase? Cell gets bigger, as we already talked about. New proteins and organelle synthesis. This is pretty important. In order for a cell to divide, you need duplicates of everything, not just the DNA itself. You need new, you need two, um, let's say, Golgi apparatus. You need two copies of every single one of the lysosomes. You need the ER, whatever. Everything needs to be duplicated. Then we prepare for DNA replication, right? We need to check to make sure that there is no DNA damage. So we need to make sure there's enough nutrients, there's growth factor or regulatory protein, there's no DNA damage. And then, otherwise, the cell would go into the G0 phase if it doesn't go through the G1 checkpoint. S phase. So now see that picture right here is the same as this right here. We have a pair of homologous chromosomes. So this is also, this is all, these are also homologous. homologous. But this is on the left. These are homologous chromosomes that are not duplicated. These are duplicated homologous chromosomes. S phase, DNA replication, new DNA synthesis, excuse me, uh, new DNA synthesized when the chromosomes are replicated. Two DNA, four DNA again. S checkpoint, checks for DNA replication errors. Make sure that there's no, you know, we don't have half, half DNA not replicated, for example. Um, DNA damage, are there too many mutations that we need to fix? Um, that kind of things. Now, on to G2, and when we pass the S phase, we're on to G2. So by the time we get, G, get to G2, we'll already have double the amount of DNA. G2 is the shortest. Uh, this one doesn't matter. You don't have to know it's the shortest. Organelles and molecules required for cell division are produced, so we need to make sure that all the organelles are duplicated. The cell is exactly big enough before cell division can happen. DNA replication, no damage to the DNA, right? So think about, like, this makes sense. Now we're on to the M phase. The mitotic phase, so mito the mitotic phase actually includes mitosis and cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is the step where the, the cells actually split apart, like there's actually membrane formed in between the two cells so that you can get two different cells. Um, and we'll see pictures of that. So M phase has mitosis and cytokinesis, produces two daughter cells. Uh, and then in the next video, we're going to talk about how exactly does mitosis happen. But right here, which phase is longer, interphase or mitosis? It has to be interphase, right? The preparation is, the anticipation is always longer than the actual job. So interphase is much longer than mitosis. Actually, 90% of the cell's life. I mean, this is just a, you know, an estimate. Every, every cell is different. Um, major events during the interphase are everything that we talk about. Chromosomes replicated. Nucleolus become visible. This one you don't need to know. Nuclear membrane retain, remains intact, just says your nucleus is still a whole nucleus. Um, what happens if cell cycle regulation fails? You would have a lot of mutations and your cell might become cancerous. This you don't need to know. All right. Uh, the next video, we're going to talk about mitosis.